I have some news to share. I just found out recently that I was accepted into medical school in Canada. So I kind of tried to keep this secret on my channel because I didn't know whether I was gonna get in. Honestly, I thought I had no chance. So fall of 2023, I had applied to eight medical schools in total. So it was University of British Columbia, University of Alberta, University of Calgary, University of Toronto, McMaster University, Western University of Ottawa, and finally Queens. Stay tuned to the end to find out which schools I was ultimately accepted to. And I'm also going to be sharing several general tips on your applications because I know many of you are starting to think about that. In the future, I'm definitely going to be making many more videos about advice for medical school applications, the MCAT, and my extracurriculars. I'll be sharing my experiences, my journey, and I really hope to help at least a few of you out there who are applying to Canadian medical schools because I've been there and I know that it was not easy. I definitely hadn't always known that I wanted to be a doctor. It's something that I only started thinking about around two years ago and it was a period where I was going through a lot of anxiety just thinking about what to do after college. I felt so lost. I had no idea what I have truly liked and so I started looking around and talking to more people. I would talk to people who worked in healthcare, and this is because obviously we can't deny that healthcare is an obvious career path for someone who studied life sciences. So as a neuroscience specialist and psychology minor, this is one of the careers that I investigated a lot. And I also shadowed other jobs online through University of Toronto. However, after trying different jobs, and talking to other people in different careers, I feel like I just naturally gravitated towards medicine. To be honest, I didn't want a job where I just sat at a desk all day behind a computer or only having virtual meetings with people. I wanted a job where I could utilize my scientific knowledge to help others and to interact with other people and to listen to their stories and help solve their problems with them and not just for them. I think a huge motivation for me to pursue medicine is actually because several years ago, both of my grandmothers fell very ill due to a neurological condition. This was a very debilitating impact on not only them, but also us as their family. And so during this time, I became very interested in neuroscience and neurology, etc. I also felt very inspired by the doctors that we talked to because even though our family was going through such a difficult time, we felt much better knowing that expert doctors were there taking care of us every step of the way. They had long conversations with us. They made decisions with us. And it was just a very trusting relationship that we had with them. And so I felt that in my future career, this is something that I also wanted to be. So fast forward to year three after I had reflected on all of this, I decided to take human anatomy, which both fulfilled my program and also my curiosity about this field. It actually turned out to be my favorite class that I've ever done for my program. This is because it was both challenging, which I really liked, and also because the curriculum that the professor used actually was being used in her other class with her medical students. So that's how I got a taste of what it was like to be a medical student, the things that I would eventually learn. And I was just so fascinated by the way that the human body worked before I start sounding too much of a nerd. Basically, I was just fascinated by the topic and I wanted to investigate this further in a field where I could continuously learn about this and make new discoveries, even of my own. So last February, I decided that I was going to apply to medical school. And I must say that I was very fortunate to have been able to immerse myself in all of these opportunities and experiences that have really set me up to this decision and my eventual application. For the final results, the moment you guys have all been probably the most curious about, I was accepted into Western University and McMaster University's schools of medicine. 
funny story of how I found out I'm actually traveling right now to visit my family in China, so I'm in a completely different time zone. Honestly, I didn't even let myself calculate the time zone because I was just so nervous. I felt like I both wanted to know, but I also didn't want to know. Because during this period, honestly, after interviews and before decisions were released, I felt so good knowing that there was nothing else that I could do and this was just in God's hands and I could just sit back and relax and just try to be happy with the hard work that I've done up to this point. As it got closer to the decision date, I started getting really nervous thinking that, okay, this is either going to make me cry. Well, it's probably going to make me cry either way, but this is either going to make me extremely happy or it's going to make me feel really depressed for who knows how long. So I was absolutely terrified. I didn't want to know. I didn't even sit at my computer. I didn't go on my email. I didn't even let myself think about what time it was going to be released. Don't ask me how I did that. I just completely just canceled it from my mind. So I was just sitting on the couch and I heard my email sound and I was like, oh, what's this? Who's emailing me right now? I'm on break. And I opened it and it was like, congratulations, good news from Schulich School of Medicine. And I was like completely shocked. My mom wasn't even home. I just went to the other room and told my dad, I was like, I couldn't even speak loudly. It was not registering with me. I said, I got accepted into medical school. And it was just surreal. It was a, a crazy moment. Oh my gosh, I feel so emotional just thinking about it because it was only, I guess, several days ago. And the next day I got an email from McMaster telling me that I was accepted to McMaster as well. and. I was like completely just blown away because I didn't expect to get a single acceptance. And after I got Western, I was like, okay, my luck must have been all used up. There's no way I could just be happy with this. I only need one school and I'm not going to hope for anything else, even though McMaster was probably going to be my first choice among the schools that I had interviews at. And I was just blown away. I was like, this, this must be God. <laughs> I could not have done that. This is crazy. Mm. Oh my gosh. It's real. It's real. I want to say a huge, immense thank you to everyone who has supported me on this journey. I could not have done that without you. I could not have done that by myself. And I want to first and foremost thank my parents, my lovely parents for unconditionally supporting me while I was busy changing my mind and doubting myself. I want to thank everyone who has practiced interviews with me, who helped me review my essays, to my professors, for everyone who has believed in me when I was continuously doubting myself and thinking that I couldn't do it. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and thank you to you guys who are watching this video. So as for general tips, I think besides the obvious ones like keeping your GPA up, at this point in time, what's really important is to do activities that you really enjoy doing and not for the sake of the admissions committee to think that you uh, would be a good fit for the program because you never know what they're thinking and they can tell when you're doing something just for medical school. To be honest, I only decided to apply to medical school around six months before my application was due. I didn't do anything that was directly or obviously related to medical school before that. And I think that that made my application attractive because I had always been involved in things that I genuinely wanted to do and ones that I personally found meaning in. Another tip I would give is to 
constantly reflect on the experiences that you've had and they can be really small experiences like a conversation you had with someone maybe one where you demonstrated a lot of listening skills it doesn't even have to be something you encountered at work so this is because during my essay writing it took a lot of reflection so the sooner you start thinking about that the better it is for you just think about okay how is this experience building my soft skills how is this helping me become someone who can be a future leader in medicine think about okay how is this activity really demonstrating my strength and don't just for example sit at a computer and enter data all day if you're doing research but try to be curious about your research try to go above and beyond read more journals try to think of other possibilities for your hypothesis or ways to explain your results try to talk to other people in your lab and really try to make the most of all of your extracurriculars because that's how you really shine because everyone does research for example every pre-med does but how are you going to shine from that so my advice is to really make that experience your own and of course my final tip is when you're studying for the MCAT which I know a lot of you are during the summer please focus on the MCAT don't try to do any other jobs or extracurriculars do not overload yourself because you will burn out and the MCAT is not an exam that you want to be doing multiple times I have friends who do it personally I do not know how they accomplish that I was like once is enough for me this was torture there was so much content so please take care of yourselves during this process make sure to just focus on the MCAT get it out of the way get a great score so that you never have to do it again I know that this sounds really easy to hear and really easy to say but another huge tip that I really want to give and it's really important is please do not stress out too much about this your mental health and your physical health are both super important in this process make sure you are surrounded by family members who support you and friends if that is not possible who emotionally support you as well I know that this means a lot to you it also meant a lot to me but please do not let it take over your entire life medical school and mission committees also want to know that you are able to overcome your stress and that you can manage it and that you are an interesting person who has hobbies who are not just obsessed with being a pre-med during your time as a pre-med and so this is all super important not just right now but also in your future career as a doctor with so many responsibilities you have to be able to balance that and so please start now take care of yourselves so just hang in there you guys are doing amazing if this is something that you really want if there is a will there is a way right and I'm gonna do my best to help you guys as much as I can so leave a comment in the comment section to let me know what you guys would want to hear from me and yeah see you guys in the next video